A well-developed corrective action program is a powerful tool for experiencing improvement within your organization. But corrective action, like anything else, has to be well-planned. Enjoy this preview of Creating a Corrective Action Plan with Denise Robitaille. This course deals with creating an effective corrective action plan. The things that we have to consider when we're putting together a corrective action plan are what the action plan actually is supposed to be, what it's supposed to entail, what the benefits are of putting together a really good plan, who's responsible for this plan and who should be involved in putting the plan together, and all the steps that go into actually making that plan. Putting together a corrective action plan is actually like putting together a project plan. It has many of the same features. You address multiple different activities. You have to consider various constraints as well as the resources that you need. So you have to look at time constraints, constraints in terms of people's availability, multiple different things that might affect your ability to be able to fulfill the plan. You put together a timeline. Timelines should have milestones in them. That allows you to predict when a particular activity can occur based upon whether or not a previous activity that had been identified has been completed, which is something that a lot of people ignore when they're trying to put together a corrective action plan. Uh, you want to ensure that you have specific people involved and assigned to, to, to do the different activities in the plan. Uh, you want to make sure that you have defined what the outcome is going to be. What do you expect the output of your plan to actually be? Do you have a concrete picture in your mind? Can you define it? And do you have metrics? Do you have some way of measuring the results of your plan? So what are you going to put into place in order to be able to monitor the activities and determine whether or not the output is actually that which was intended, which is to solve the problem and hopefully to enjoy other improvements as well. This is an example of a form that you can use. The benefit of using this kind of form is that it ensures that you don't forget any particular activity. The way this works is that into these spaces right here, you're going to put in the processes that you're going to be revising, the documents that need to be changed, the tasks that need to be completed as appropriate to each category on the left hand side. Over in this column right here, you're going to put the persons that you need to have involved in this. And you need to identify those individuals and make sure that you get their authorization and that you indeed get their permission before you put their name on this corrective action plan. Next to that, you're going to put in the actual time that will be devoted to that activity. And finally, the duration, how long it will take before that particular activity is completed. And you'll find, as you're putting your plan together, that the completion of one activity is predicated on the completion of other activities beforehand. So you're going to put all of this together, and then when you're finished, you'll have a complete indication of all the activities that need to be done, and down here you will indicate how long it will be before the entire corrective action plan is completed. After you've done that, you can go back up to the top here and summarize the plan. And we'll talk later on what kind of things go into this summary. So join me, Denise Robitaille, as I discuss all the different aspects of putting together a great corrective action plan. The Creating a Corrective Action Plan training video is available at PeytonProfessional.com.